Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. What's going on? Uh, we are going to be talking about the weather today and all of us are in a service industry so the weather has a huge huge effect on us. But first and foremost, if you are new to the podcast, what's going on? My name is Jersey. Nice to meet you. I am a sales rep with Window Cleaning Resource. Um, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. You like what you see. It's not the worst thing you've done all day with your time and you go back and watch a bunch of the other episodes. Now, this is going on 80 something, 80 something episodes uh, every single week on Friday. Have not missed one. It is a 30-minute podcast. It's available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, all those places. Anywhere you listen to podcasts. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, of course, on YouTube. So, if you're watching or listening, go to YouTube and make sure to comment, share, thumbs up, do all that stuff. That's kind of where the interaction happens. So, please, 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 if you got a second, comment. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what's up love to hear from you. And if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids, somebody who watches the show all the time, listens, comments, uh, if you do all of that, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, huh? what's going on? It is because of you that I get to have actual hamburger meat in my hamburger helper. So thank you very, very much uh, for... Um, <laughs> buying for me. I don't know what regular just helper would be without the hamburger. I don't know if that's even good, but uh, maybe it's something to try. But anyway, if you want to buy your supplies through me, I genuinely would appreciate it. Big, small, it doesn't matter. Throw it in your cart at windowcleaningresource.com. Text me and say, hey, what's up? It's all in my cart and I'll take it from there. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it does give me kind of a boost. That's how um, I make my cheddar, and it's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. So please do that. My number directs 862 312 2026. That is my cell. So you can text it, call it, whatever you want. Uh, also, Facebook message has been huge. If you see me on Facebook, um, go ahead and message me on Facebook. That's awesome too. I could do a lot of that uh, all day, every day. So please bug me. It'd be awesome. <clears throat> I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize for all these throat clearings. But anyway, this week, I also want to give shout-outs to, first and foremost, Cassidy Morrison, one of the cool kids for sure, Brad Hyatt, who is also one of the cool kids. He's everywhere. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, and um, Brandon Evans, who, coincidentally, is the uh, person who came up with the idea for this week's show. Um, he also has the best comments on the internet. Uh, he said something about me being a genius, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> I didn't take it to heart. I just had to print it out and put it on my wall. No big deal. Right. Uh, no, but, uh, thank you to you guys. Um, also if you want to leave a, uh, show what you'd like, go to YouTube, put the comment down, shoot me an email, text me, whatever. I want to hear your ideas for show. Truly. It is hard going over the content every week that doesn't suck. Uh, not every week do I achieve that goal. But this week's winner of the $50 credit for Window Cleaning Resource is Lisa Grubbs. What's going on? Uh, genuinely appreciate you checking us out. All you need to do if you want to win the store credit every single week, all of our giveaways go right through YouTube. Comments, not only are you saying what's up to me, but you are in the runnings for a winning something every single week. Next week, we're going to be giving away another $50 credit to Window Cleaning Resource. So go ahead and comment. Anyway, on with the show. So this week, because, again, Brandon Evans is the one that kind of came up with this idea, which thank you very much for putting this out there. I haven't really talked specifically about that, even though this is a huge, huge, huge part of our business. Now, I've talked about winter <clears throat> I've talked about spring, but I haven't talked about the weather side of it as much as I've talked about what to do during those times. So in the winter, you have less work to do, right? So you have more time to go and uh, improve your systems and kind of rebuild things, restructure things, that type of thing. Try not to uh, cough on camera here. Um, but what do you do? when the weather is a certain way? Like, how do you do your service? Now, window cleaners come here and listen, watch all that 
But so do pressure washers, roof cleaners, concrete guys. Those people all are watching the podcast also or listening. And we're all outdoor service stuff. Yes, there's some inside stuff, you know. But no one wants to clean gutters when they're frozen solid. That sucks. I got into an argument on one of the Facebook groups with somebody who said, Oh, it's totally possible. All you got to do is just pour boiling water or something ridiculous down the um, gutter. That sounds miserable. I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to clean gutters. I was in Wisconsin. I moved a couple years ago to North Carolina for weather reasons. But I'm not going to work extra hard to try to get some of this work done. And they're like, well, you'd rather not make any money? Yes, absolutely. I would rather make no money than like $3 an hour busting my hump doing something that's miserable when I could just wait till spring. Everybody always waits, especially if you're in a cold climate. It's very hard to get everybody done and what they need to do. But we're going to go over some options kind of for different weather situations. Now, <clears throat> I've talked about this before, and the best thing that I've done to fill and help my schedule is what I call the floater board. All it is is just a big dry erase board that has permanent marker, lines, you know, gridded out to kind of like a spreadsheet that hangs on my wall. And all it says is floater on the top. That's all it says. On that board, anything that is... Um, Anything that I can do without a homeowner being present. So if somebody is having the outs only done on a Pella, you know, crank out style house, or if somebody's having their roof cleaned or their gutters cleaned or something like that, I'm going to throw it on what's called the float board. What that is, is a non-scheduled activity. And I tell people, I say, hey, so for your service, you don't need to be home. So we're going to put you on what's called our floater board. And what that means is that we will get to you as soon as possible, and it fills up our spot. So I don't have a specific date for you, but I do know that it will be soon. And if you have any questions before we get out there, let me know. But service should be done within the next week or so. That's what I say. And people go, oh, yeah, no problem. I just want it done. I always tell them, too, that you'll know that we're there because we're going to leave you an envelope with a whole bunch of goodies in there, letting you know what service we did and go from there. Now, people always say, well, then you don't get your money. That's right. I don't. But what I do is after that service is done from a floater board, I call and say, hey, Mrs. Smith, uh, this is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. And I just wanted to call and let you know that we made it out to your property today. I appreciate you being patient with us. Everything turned out great. I always mention the problems if I see any or if that all turned out great. So if you're doing gutters and one gutter sagging a little bit or leaking or something, oh, everything turned out great. But in the northwest corner, there was a little bit of a leak. Just want to give you a heads up. It shouldn't be a big problem, but something to keep an eye on. <clears throat> That always shows people that you're there. It also shows people that you kind of care about what they got going on. So that's the big part uh, with the floater board. Now, when I am also talking to them on the phone, I'm going to say, uh, your bill for that service is uh, $199. Now, did you have uh, MasterCard or Visa you'd like to pay that on? Um, and they go, oh, uh, let me grab my card. Hold on one second. Right? I take the card number right over the phone. I enter it into my software. Boom, boom, done. I don't have to chase it. Now, if somebody goes, oh, I was hoping I could pay with a check. Oh, hey, not a problem. I'll send a tech out there a little later today. You'll be around after four, and I'll shoot somebody out there to get the check because it's cheaper for me to have somebody stop at somebody's house than to pay my office goddess to go and chase that collection down. Um, I want to get paid. Getting paid is the name of the game. Getting paid is why we do this. Nobody cleans windows just because it's such a passion. And if nobody paid them, they'd still bust their hump like they do. It just doesn't happen. So that's what I do. And the floater board, for me, is huge. What that does in all of these weather cases is that if somebody cancels due to weather or somebody, um, if there's just a pocket, say the guys get done faster, They'll call their job as if they get done before X amount of time before the day. They call and say, hey, do we have any jobs? I can see it from the board. Per dollar, I always schedule um, $50 per man hour um, in the board. And what that does is, no, I really make 50 No. But what that does is that's my scheduling time. So if something is $200, I know that a crew of two will get that done in uh, two hours. Uh, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's for drive time. That's, you know, doing all of it. Um, 
that's what I now that two hundred dollar job is not going to take two hours. It's not going to take two hours to drive there and drive back. But what it's going to do is make sure that I have enough room. That job should take about an hour. If it's gutters or something, it could go a lot quicker. Gutters, we end up charging two fifty for a minimum, and uh, that minimum gutter job will take us thirty minutes. One person, something like that, depending on how bad it is. But anyway, I digress. So that's how we fill things in now. Different weather weather situations will allow you to do different things. Now, winter is where we are right now when this podcast is coming out. You may be watching it during the summer. Awesome. I'm still wearing a hoodie for that reason. Um, but in wintertime, no matter what state you're in, it will get cold. You'll have frost uh, for the most part. Basically, any state will get frost. And any state can get snow. So you kind of have to work around that. Now, from Wisconsin, which you northerners... Uh, hat goes off to you, man. My blood thinned so stinking quick moving down that it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but <clears throat> if you are, say, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, one of those, where uh, November it starts to get chilly and it gets gray and cold and stays that way until like March, April, May, you're not able to do gutters for the most part throughout the year. Now, there may be some warm times, but if you're not in a northern climate, you may not understand that our sun up there is not warm. Like, you can stare at the sun, and you kind of feel it sometimes, but there's a lot of times you don't even feel it. Down south, you guys look at the sun in the middle of winter, it could be 30 degrees out if the sun hits you, you're like, ah, it's different, right? So in the north, in the winter time, you don't have the thaw like you do down south. The big thing, too, is if you have a 40-degree day, which throughout the winter in almost any state, you have the time where it's going to be a little bit warmer or even a warm stretch. Those warm stretches, I'm going to schedule all the things that can't get done when it's super, super cold. First and foremost, gutter cleaning. Because the gutters, I need to get cleared out so that it's clear by spring. I don't want to have carryover gutters in spring, but you will either way. Um, the big thing is to know that if it was 20 degrees on the warm side for the past two weeks and now it's going to be 40 today, those gutters are not going to be thawed more than likely. That aluminum's still cold. It was cold overnight. You may not have it, but if you get a warm stretch, you may be able to do something in that time. That's when you start getting your floater board, seeing what's on there, and trying to fill those gaps. That is winter. Winter is the chase of getting things done when you can, right? We're squirrels. We always talk about that you got to get that kind of, you know, stock up for the time that you don't have anything. And it's the same thing with business. The scheduling of jobs has to be filled when you can actually get them done, which in most cases uh, comes sometimes. And I've had winters where I couldn't do one gutter job for five months. You know, sometimes that happens, but for the most part, people who also live there go, oh yeah, no, I, I completely understand. You know, I'll catch up with people too uh, on the floater board. If anybody's on there for more than two weeks, I call and say, hey, just to let you know, there's a jersey from XYZ. We didn't forget about you. We just haven't been able to fit you in yet with the weather the way it is, but don't you worry, you're second on the list. We'll get to you as soon as, you know, something like that. People want to know you didn't forget about them and... If you keep up with them like that, not only do they realize you're a real company, which is huge in our industry, we're not bucket bobs, right? But they also understand that when it's time to go, okay, hey, we got to your service, we did it. It's not two months later and they go, who is this? You did what at my house? Right? You're keeping up with them, keeping them basically knowing that they're still a priority to you, which is huge. Wintertime, there's a lot more chasing and work to get and produce and do the work and keep people happy than there is even in summer. That's winter time. But in winter time, you get snow. Snow is like rain, right? You can clean in the snow. Does it suck? Yes, sometimes. But if you have route or a big route, if it's snowing, snow is so much better than rain. Rain sucks, and I don't like to work in rain. If you work in rain, post it down below. I want to hear. I don't. I don't work in the rain. I don't send guys out in the rain. If it starts raining halfway through, sometimes they'll finish some awning work or insides or something like that, but I don't send guys out in the rain. And the reason is, is that it's so hard to chase what drops are dirty and what drops are rain. Rain is clean for the most part. Rain is actually pure for the most part. It's what it touches on the way down. <clears throat> so with clean rain, it rain is not going to spot things. Spotting actually happens when the dirt film, if you will, on the window is uniform 
And once the rain hits it, it condenses into droplets. And as those droplets start shrinking and evaporating, it gets really condensed. And then you see dirty droplets. That's what it is. It's not the rain that's dirty, right? So with the rain, I offer a seven-day rain uh, guarantee on my residential window cleanings. I don't do that on commercial. It's the same thing where people go, well, rain is rain no matter if you own a house or a business. Yes, but in route, I'm going to be back there in a week or two. It doesn't matter. Look at a winter. If, if you guys have pictures, post them up. Share them whatever you want, but show somebody who is down south or somebody who's not in like a Wisconsin what a window looks like after it's been cleaned in Wisconsin. They still do not look great. There's so much salt that's put down. It is very, very hard for you to do good results. But people just get that that's just what it is. They're going to put down 50 pounds of salt that night. They know that it's not going to look super awesomely great. And cars splash the salty solution, which is now slush all over the windows. It just You're just trying to keep up with them, right? So I'm not going to do a rain guarantee with that. But I will on houses. What that does, and in 13 years, I have had one person call and they were just trying to scam me. Like, oh, the whole house is bad. The whole house? I've never had anybody call. you got to come back. and I went back and not one window had a spot on it. They were just trying to get another free window cleaning. Yes, that may happen. But it is not going to get callbacks like people think. They go, I can't do that. I can't clean somebody's house twice. You're not. I'm telling you, you're not. But what it does do is the worst thing ever in rain is when you look at the schedule, it looks like it's going to rain, phone ringing all morning going, hey, I'm scheduled today at noon. It looks like it's going to rain. I'm going to reschedule right? Rescheduling sucks because what happens is you may not actually get rain. You may, it may rain for a few minutes and it's gone. So what I do is say, um, Hey, uh, yeah, we have a seven day rain guarantee. So there's no need to worry about the rain. Uh, you know, we'll be there the normal time. And if it spots any window at all, all you gotta do is just call me like you are right now and just say, Hey, this window is spotted. We'll come back and make it look beautiful. But I hate to reschedule it because we're over a month out. I know you want these done now. It's not only going to mess up our schedule to do that, but rain itself is clean and just doesn't dirty windows. If the rain gets too bad, then we'll call you to reschedule. That's kind of my spiel. And that keeps my schedule healthy. It keeps my schedule full. Now, if the rain is happening that day and it's just downpouring, yes. I'm going to reschedule and try to put those people in as soon as possible. Again, if there's floater stuff, I can just put those, keep them on the board. But rain, I don't work in. If you work in rain and you like rain, awesome. I don't. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Uh, so that is rain. Rain guarantee, if you're not doing it, offer one. Because if you offer a rain guarantee, I'm telling you, it's going to help your schedule out immensely. And by the way, if you're listening... Uh, and these pauses now, I think that's like the third one. It's me taking a sip uh, of uh, my drink so that I'm not, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, coffee on you. So just deal with the, the, the quiet pauses. <laughs> It'll be fine. With rain comes um, uh, snow. Snow is the same as rain. It just doesn't affect you unless it's super thick. But on the opposite side of rain, it can be cloudy and not rain. Now, cloudy skies, uh, everybody goes, well, why would you even bring that up? Because windows act differently in overcast days than they do on not overcast days. 100%. You guys know that. In an overcast day, it's really nice when you're doing traditional stuff because it doesn't dry on the window, especially in summer. If you get an overcast day, it's nice. You don't have that beating sun. The downside is, is if you're water feeding on a rainy day or a cloudy day, when you're water feeding, your water is going to dry slower. Now, that doesn't really necessarily mean anything bad, except if you got crappy air. If you're in an area that has a lot of smog or dust in the air or pollen or any of that stuff, and that water stays on the window for a longer period of time, it's pulling crap out of the air all the time. Because those droplets on the window are pure, but pure water strives to be dirty. We've talked about that. They pull all those particles out of the air, and now it's on the glass, and then you end up getting spotting afterwards. So there's something to kind of be said for cloudy days. you got to keep an eye on that. Hopefully it dries faster. The faster pure water dries, the better, just for that reason. Now, in Wisconsin, because we had a lot of cloudy days, I did not ever get spotting from overcast days. 
It just didn't happen because our, our air quality was pretty darn good. It wasn't, wasn't, we weren't dusty. Uh, it wasn't, we didn't have pollen like we have down south, which, uh, if you guys are, uh, down south, hats off to you dealing with pollen. That's something I didn't quite get the gist of, but that is clouds. On the opposite side of clouds is what if it's like brilliant sun? What if the sun is beating down on you? Well, if you do, it's the opposite of overcast. Remember your water fed pole is going to work great. With your traditional style window cleaning, that's not going to work as well because it's going to instantly cook off. But here's a tip. This is, I call it flashing a window, but I don't even know if that's really the term. Here's the thing. There's two parts to doing this. Or two times you should do it, I should say. One is if you're using like a one restore or some type of glass uh, restoration type product. If you are, you need to flash the window first then apply that. You can't put that stuff on in the sun. It will bake off and you'll jack the window up. But the other time is when you're doing traditional squeegee scrubber style window cleaning. And flashing is taking a big mop full of lots of water, right? I didn't even wring it out. Slap, slap, slap. Slosh it on the window. And what happens is that stuff flashes. It'll maybe steam off. It'll dry a little bit. As soon as that is, I dunk the mop again and then I wash the window. And that second time that you apply water to the window, it will not flash off the window. It will not evaporate quick because that instant heat is already gone. You've, you've gotten that with the first one. Now you just do it again. A lot of times people hate cleaning the sun because they do it once. Oh, it's drying and they quick try to do That's not the thing. You hit it once, dunk him up again, hit it again, and you're not worried about that stuff drying so stinking fast. And if you still are having that problem and you just can't kind of get the flashing thing right, then get something like the backflip. Uh, Ettoray makes a backflip where it's a scrubber on one side and a squeegee on the other side, super fast, or even better yet, if you're going to the next level kind of in your business anyway, go into water fed, man. Water fed is awesome. Uh, get water fed. You don't have to worry about that then. Those are the things. Now, back to something real quick because I touched on it and I want to tell you, this is one of my best, favorite, biggest tricks that you have. I use a lot of One Restore. I love One Restore. It is a hard water remover. External only, there are fumes to it. But what you do is you put it in a pump-up sprayer. It's RTU, ready to use, right? You spray it on the glass, let it sit, keep it wet, spray it again if you need to, you know, let it sit for 30 seconds or so, then you rinse it off with water. It's just that easy. But the problem is when your glass is super hot and you need to flash it, you don't need to take your scrubber. You already got the hose out. I spray that window down steam all off spray it down again once that water doesn't just evaporate instantly i've cooled the window down the window is now not flashing instantly when it touches right i can now spray that on i flashed the window i made it so it's not going to evaporate right away now i can hit it with the one restore and i don't have to worry about having that dry so interesting tip there uh, with the sun though with the sun, just like with uh, rain kind of is paired with clouds, is paired with winter, with the direct sun, no matter what climate you're in, you're in, it's heat. Now, heat in general is not going to really, it's the sun that affects your cleaning, not as much heat. But what heat does is it affects you. And everybody goes, I know, I know. I say that. I am just some dummy with a microphone. You guys know that. I am not anybody more special or talented or knowledgeable than anybody else. I just talk on, on screen. But I have had heat stroke multiple times because I'm an idiot. That's, a, <laughs> that's what it's from. Like, if you got heat stroke, like, listen, I don't ever want a gun on any of you. But if you had a heat stroke, it's because you were an idiot at that time. You did something stupid. You knew in your heart of hearts that this is this is here. Heat stroke is real and it creeps up on you and it is the worst feeling ever. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm in a lift. I was on a crew. We had everybody on site. And uh, we had um, one of our guys was actually a route guy that we pulled to put on this job. We had every, literally almost everybody in the company on this one job. And I was working with him. Like, hey, let's do all the lift work because there was some lift work. We had to do some uh, pole work. Could, probably could have done it all without the lift, but whatever. They had it on site. I'm in there. I ended up getting jacked. I, I was standing there 
next to him. He's doing one window. I'm controlling and doing the other side. We're doing this uh, two. It was like these bays of windows, so it was faster. Two guys dropping. And all of a sudden, like, I'm sitting there, and I, like, fall, like, into him, kind of, like, stumble. And he's like, all right, man, you're drinking. I'm like, yeah, no, that was um, the wind. And I was like, that's so weird. It was so weird. Like, my dumb brain at the time didn't catch that what was happening. And uh, about five to ten minutes later, the piercing headache starts. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, nauseous headache. Like, your your eyes hurt. You're, you're, you're so absolutely fatigued. I'm like, shoot. I'm getting, I, I messed up. I'm trying to, gal- I, we keep gallons of water. Every employee keeps a gallon of water. They get a gallon of water in the summer. Here's your gallon of water. Drink that water. Carry it with you. Bring it, whatever. You always have a gallon of water. There's, you can't drink too much water in the summer. Um, and the more water you have in the summer, the more absorption happens in your muscles and you just feel better. So you can work better and I get more efficient guys in the summer if they feel better. No one feel, wants to feel like crap anyway. I don't want my guys to feel like crap either. But we dropped a lift. I'm, I can't barely even like walk. I'm like, uh, I should have. It should have been like ambulance time. But I got to the back of the building where the shade was. All the other employees kind of hearing what's going on. They're all coming down. One guy went. We had there was a Jimmy John's in the bottom. He got like one of those big cookies for the sugar, and it was this huge thing. I'm like drinking and like trying to. And it took probably a good thirty minutes for me to get back to where I could like stand and not just barf all over everything heat stroke is awful it's awful so the big thing in the sun is yes the heat is going to make the windows act differently right better time for water fed a little bit worse time for traditional you kind of have to add an extra step but keeping yourself done and hydrated is so important so important now with that idea i guess of of not getting heat stroke you can actually get dehydrated in the winter time too being in wisconsin we have a lot of days the wind blows the wind is piercing and the wind is so cold and awful that it just sucks the moisture out of you that's why your hands look like they do after you know you're in and out of the warm and the cold and you just your hands turn into these cement blocks of just gross awful it's pulling the moisture out of you so in that winter time, you have the same problem where you need to drink a ton. You need to drink a ton. Not only is it going to make your skin feel better, but it is going to make you feel better, which means you can work better and more efficient. So keep an eye on all of that because it sucks when any of that hits. If you've got a story of heat stroke, tell me. Uh, comment down below. I want to hear about it. Um, but that's weather, man. I appreciate it, Brandon Evans, again. Uh, not only do you have the best comments on the internet, uh, but uh, you had an idea, and I love it. Thank you so much for the idea. Uh, hopefully, it might have helped somebody. Kind of already know he's in Seattle. I don't know about constant rain, but hopefully the floater schedule and working in the rain and that type of thing uh, help you a little bit better. I hate working in the rain. You probably have to. It's uh, definitely, definitely dinner. different, but thank you for the suggestion either way. Now, if you've already made it to this point and you're still listening, awesome. I'm going to give you a code right now for 5% off your order because you've listened through. This week's um, code is let's do weather. This week's code is weather. All you need to do is text me saying everything's in your cart. If you like to shop yourself, take your time, shop it up, put it in your cart. Make sure you're logged in so your cart saves it. And then just text me and be like, yo, what's up? Everything's in my cart. My name is XYZ. Weather is the code. And then you get 5% off. Uh, I'll probably give you a call. Go over everything. Make sure your information is correct. It takes one minute. Get your info and boom, you're good. If you want me to always put your order in, that would be so awesome. But I am also able to keep your card on file if you always want to do that. I have a lot of guys uh, and gals actually that do that where they're like, hey, just FYI, I need this, this, and this. Uh, address is the same. I got all the information in there. I'm going, okay, great. I'll get it ordered now. Super, super easy. My number again is 862-312-2026. Yes, that's my number. Shoot me a text. Say what's up. Tell me where you're from. Tell me you barfed on a window one time because you got heat stroke. I want to hear from you. But most importantly, I want to put your order in. So please, please, please let me do that. Um, yeah, so... Uh, that's it for this week uh go out there don't get heat stroke deal with the weather we're like 60 days from spring but most importantly go out there and be epic